Today we're gonna to be talking about Tobola, which is usually a huge crowd pleaser in Mescal circles. We'll learn about Tobola and then go through some of my very favorites. All right, let's do it. Tobola is agave potatorum, and it's smaller than most of the other agave species used to make Mescal. It's mostly found in the Mexican state of Oaxaca and also a little bit north of there in the state of Puebla. It's known for its sweet, aromatic, and floral aromas and flavors. It's a scarcer agave as it takes 12 to 15 years until it's mature and ready to be harvested. That's roughly double the time than blue agave that's used to make tequila or agave angustifolia espadine, which is the most commonly used for mezcal. The brand Del Maguey sold a wild tobala in the early 2000s, which was a real eye-opener. It was one of the first commercially available variety of mezcals after Espadine. This showcased the incredible variety of mezcal. I personally think it's the wine of the spirit world. This opened the door for dozens of other agaves, maguey's to enter the market. Another interesting fact about Tobala, it does not produce shoot-like offspring called pups, so they must be wholly grown from seed. So the quality producers out there, they start growing Tobala by seed in nurseries. And when they're old enough, strong enough to survive in the wild, then they transplant them usually at about one to two years. So that's a few tidbits on Tobala. Now let's get into the bottles I think you'll enjoy. But one thing to mention, Tobala bottles are usually very pricey. Every one I talk about in this video are gonna be over $100. But remember, this is a scarce and popular agave, so it's gonna be a high price point compared to Espadine. But I definitely think Tobala are worth it, especially if you wanna splurge for high-end, top-shelf mezcal. All right, the first Tobala we're gonna to talk about today, La Locura. This Tobala is made by Eduardo Lalo Angeles, clay pot distilled to 49% ABV. The Palenque or Mezcal distillery is in Santa Catarina Minas in Oaxaca. Lalo has a great Mezcal distillery down in Minas. I was able to visit there earlier in the year. The Orno is all fired up, ready to cook a batch. And he also has a sizable nursery that we got to explore. All right, now let's uh, check out some of the flavor notes. All right, we got some tropical punch, a nice dessert note of blueberry cheesecake, big time clay notes with a meatier finish. Most mezcals released by La Locura are fantastic, and this is certainly no exception. A tobala that I tried recently that I really enjoy, Pluma Negra. This tobala is made by Rodolfo Hernandez, copper pot distilled to 48% ABV, and the Palenque is in San Juan del Rio, Oaxaca. I was originally drawn to this bottle because Rodolfo made a high proof Tepestate, I think 55% uh, for Pierre de Almas. So I wanted to see how his Tobala game was and Rodolfo put his skills to work once again. This Tobala is fantastic. Let's check out the flavors. Nice, we have some dried apricot. I uh, pick up some like a Sprite soda sweetness in there and baked green apple, Granny Smith apple. One thing I really like about Rodolfo and the Pluma Negra line, all the flavors uh, in the mezcals, very clean, very sharp, very distinct, great stuff. Next up, we have this Absolute Beauty by El Hogorio. I love this mezcal. I think it might be my favorite of the whole El Hogorio line. So about this bottle, it's made by Gregorio Martinez Garcia, more famously known as Don Goyo. It's copper pot distilled to 47% ABV, the Palenque is in San Baltasar, Guaylavia, in Oaxaca. I was able to visit Don Goyo in San Baltasar. What an amazing experience. Don Goyo was doing a second distillation while I was there, and I was able to try some 120 proof, 60% ABV right off the still. Everything I've tried from Don Goyo, absolute magic. Let's try out some of the flavor notes. Wow. To me, this is like, a cheesecake topped with a bunch of fresh tropical fruit. It's got a nice bit of peppermint heat and a crazy good oak campfire amber finish. Wow. Now we have Del Maguey's San Pablo Amal Tepec. This is made by Aurelio Gonzalez Tobon. Copper pot distilled to 47% ABV. And the Palenque is in San Pablo Amal Tepec, Puebla. Again, comes from the state of Puebla, but there sometimes they call it papalote instead of tobala. Delmage does have a tobala, it's pretty nice, but this San Pablo Myopatec is freaking fantastic. I think it's easily the best in the entire Delmage line. All right, let's check out these flavors. All right, this is a tropical fruit bomb, specifically papaya and pineapple. It's got a floral lilac note in there. 
tiny bit lactic, but to sum it up, it has an incredible balance of smoke, heat, and flavors all the way through. If you can ever try or buy this, do yourself a favor, get involved. And moving along to this one here, Vago Tobala on Barrow. This is made by Solomon Teal Ray Rodriguez, clay pot distilled to 48% ABV, and the Palenque is in Sola de Vega, Oaxaca. This bottle has very little left for good reason. This was the first agave, this Tobala, that blew my mind. In fact, this was the very first five-star review I ever gave on Mezcal reviews. There's so many awesome Mezcals in the Vago line, but the magic that Teal Ray works with this is just exceptional. And now I can't wait to try these flavors. First off, I just got punched in the face by a strawberry cheesecake. A perfect combination of creaminess and clay minerality. And a dessert finish that goes on and on and on. Just incredible. Now this one may be a little harder to find these days, but if you can find it, grab it. So the Tobolas we talked about so far, we have La Locura, Pluma Negra, El Hagorio, the Del Maguey San Pablo Amal Tepec, and the Vago Tobola on Barro. Now this last pick isn't my own, but it's extra, extra special to me. It's a selection by Judy Sherman. I originally met her through the Maguey Malate online tasting sessions, and I was introduced to her by the owner, Dalton Kreis, who warmly referred to Judy as a cherished member of our club. Judy reached out to me through Dalton and invited me to a big party she was having at her place in Morro Bay, California. I live in Buellton, California, which is about an hour, 20 minutes south of there. At the party, I got to meet Judy's inner circle of friends, including Nick Koss, who imports an awesome mezcal brand, Agua del Sol. Nick had known Judy for a while, and his nickname for her was adoringly and quite suiting his agave godmother. From there, I kept in touch with Judy quite often on WhatsApp Messenger, and we'd pretty much just geek out on mezcals that we were drinking or trying. <laughs> and when we got talking about Tobala, I asked which one was her favorite, and she passed this one on to me. It's straight from the Palenque of Fulgencio Ramirez from San Agustin Amentego in Oaxaca. This is distilled with a refrescador, which is often seen in the Mio Alan and Ahutla regions of Oaxaca. Now, Judy visited Don Fulgencio with Alvin Starkman, and they were on a educational mezcal tour in Oaxaca together. All right, I need to have a little taste here. This has clean, sharp, earthy flavors, but still raw at the same time. Awesome, you can tell this is straight from the Rancho, an absolute beautiful mezcal. I'm so honored to have this. Judy passed this on to me over the last few months uh, when she was battling cancer. She wasn't able to partake in sipping or drinking mezcal during the many months of chemo, uh, but she wanted me to experience it. I wanted to tell you the story about Judy because unfortunately she didn't win the battle. Judy was a huge part of our mezcal community. If you knew her, you loved her endless bubbly positivity and her unrivaled passion for life. So the nickname Agave Godmother, so appropriate, Judy Sherman, you're gonna be missed. Well, that's all I got for today. I really hope these picks help find the right Tobala for you. And of course, this salute off goes out to our Amiga Judy. Thanks for everything, guys. Salute.